This is sort of a trick question in a way, because I know the answer to it, but I have to ask it for all everyone else out there. Um, there are those who would say that there are many amazing national trust properties in England, as there are, and they're full of priceless antiques, as they are. So they're thinking that you really didn't need to have to do a whole heck of a lot of work, um, other than maybe high teas and house hunting uh, and yard sales. So uh, I want to dispel the myth, and I want you to speak to what were your, really your biggest challenges in taking on something like this. Oh, I mean, well, I mean, we're a small film. I mean, that's the, the first thing. So there was never a question for us uh, that we wouldn't shoot on location. I mean, for a start, Yorgos Lanthimos, uh, it's his preference. It's, you know, perf for performance reasons. And, you know, he, is, he wants to make small contained films, so he has control. There's a whole lot of reasons. Um, and so we were always going to shoot on location, and then it became the question of, you know, what locations. There were very specific things that he wanted to achieve. You know, he wanted to use open flame constantly. There are only specific houses that will allow things like that. So, you know, there were challenges like that. And yeah, I mean, they're, they're, they're sort of the main, I mean, there were conceptual challenges as well, but you know, um, for us it was, um, you know, for us with not very much money, how do we turn, how do we tell the story of a queen, her inner sanctum, how do we do this, pull off, you know, absolute privilege and luxury at a, you know, an ex really exquisite level, that's what our aim was, that's what kept us awake at night, like, you know, how do we make sure that every single thing that they're holding is effectively a jewel when we have, you know, we're on an indie budget, really, so, yeah, that was the challenge. The challenge as well in these houses are the antique furniture, it's always wrong. Oh yeah. So every every f period film you've ever done, your challenge is getting that furniture out of the room. Yeah. Because it's not the right. It's not your design. It's not how you want it to look. And it, normally it's 500 or 200 years the wrong way. So you, no one wants to move their stuff yeah. because it's so precious. So then we have to cajole with people and go. I know the table, <laughs> the Georgian table is really beautiful, but we really need to just. Take it out. So, yeah, we at Hatfield House stripped the rooms. That was our main, and they had never done that for anybody. So even the artwork and things, because, you know, artwork is, you can tell when it was painted because a lot of it's very famous. So we removed and removed and removed, and that was the biggest challenge for us. And then we can't lift the stuff up. The, the prop men can't touch anything. Everything takes ages. Yeah, it was all art handlers and, yeah. you know, temperature controlled containers and you know yeah. negotiation and you know a lot of Insurance. management yeah oh yeah absolutely yeah. you know so and that's before we even come in with construction yeah. who are then you know what's being touched what's what you know how are you going to put this in here and how are you going to hang that you know it's all negotiation but we because we were essentially there so long we had such a great relationship with the house a lot of the volunteers there became friends and that every day they got so excited about what was going to come in <laughs> because they live in these spaces and they're like, oh, what are you going to do today? <laughs> we were like, ta-da. <laughs> so they loved seeing all the changes that we made. And yeah, we just had so much fun, didn't we? Did they find any Queen Anne pieces in the basement that they brought up for you? <laughs> do you know, they've got yeah. Queen Anne's chair in, we didn't use it because it wasn't right for the film. It was red, but they've got her chair and it's all worn and got holes in it. So it's not, you know, so that's the other thing about the antique furniture. Even if it was actually her chair, it's all, you know, you can't recover it. So. Yeah. <laughs> and, and that's what, one of the things I wanted to touch on is uh, some of the hardships of doing a period film is things need to look new, yeah. but to find them yeah. and to get them into that yeah. shape, it's such a challenge yeah. that it's unbelievable. But also, the tapestries and the clearances on, I mean, did you have, I have to go there, I'm sorry. I, we, 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 well, it, it, is, it is absolutely insane now, the level of clearances. So you have to get, of course, that, art, that dead artist and the weaver to uh, sign off. When you get that off. clearance lawyer in the room, that's oh when you start God. wanting to fall asleep at your I desk. Know. Well, that's one of the things that struck me, aside from, um, speaking about lighting and, and our issues, that you lit 
the whole thing yeah. with candles and that is how a huge challenge. that's such a nightmare. Can you? Talk? Well, candles or natural light. So there's no artificial light in the film. Yeah. So we we had eighty thousand candles. And Eighty thousand. Who was the master you, you of the candles? You were talking about budget. Oh, we, we had two people. Yeah. yeah. Full time candle management. Yeah. 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 And pallets. And the panic for our buyer was, are the is the new pallet of candles going to turn up on time for the party? And it'd be like everyone's pouring the sweat, going, "So the candle is the pallet arrived?" And we're like, "No." So yeah, the cat. So you know, I think the prop master ended up with quite a few at the end. But we—that's how many we bought. And budget-wise, we're always getting so cross, going, "Come on, lighting! You know, this, there is an infinite amount that we can't just keep giving these to you." So, yeah. but it's also the candelabra and the candle hot, yeah. like all of that. We stripped yeah. all the high houses. You know, we just had to. We had everything. Yeah. So. Yeah, that became us as well. Yeah. You know, you're paying for that. The silly hidden secrets. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and the, how did you find so many tapestries? That's the other question. The tapestries and the artwork was just, it was just amazing. We painted some. We have this amazing painter who we adore and does every film with yeah. us. So he, he, you can't even see the ones he painted close up. Yeah. So he's, I mean, his work is just extraordinary. So painted, hired, and then Hatfield. So we had a mixture, yeah. And then the other question is, how do you protect such a precious home from bunnies and geese? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Not to mention grips and electrics. Yeah. <laughs> no tool belts, I assume. <laughs> well... There was the costumes to protect as well. So we had tenor ladies sewn into um, like pieces of fabric so that they went on Sandy's costumes. The biggest fear that was that we're going to ruin our stuff with rabbit wee. So we made special pads for them to sit on and our bed covers as well. There's only one bed cover. So if the rabbits are one scene, the rabbits are all over the bed and we're just thinking, at least are we on the bed? But they, they, every day, the rabbits had their own people. So... They had their own people sweeping every between every take, the rabbit poos and the rabbit wee, yeah. It was but Hatfield were amazing. They were so kind to us about that because they, you know, the rabbits did wee on their floors and they were right. Were they all adopted by you guys at the end? No, my kids wanted them. <laughs> <laughs> but they went to back to their homes. But th these are the unglamorous things that we need yeah. to deal with, right? Oh, okay. Um you know, because uh, I think all great design comes with great research. You know, without it, we really are just sort of making it up. And this is a really tough period to research. As we know, there's no photo, no photographs of anything. There are photo, there are paintings, there are etchings, and there are actually the physical buildings themselves. So I'm really curious how you guys research the period, because I mean, with period films, there's a tendency to be too precious and too correct as opposed to getting to the honest and emotional truth that's in the story. So I want to know how you guys sort of made those choices to keep it real and to keep it emotional, but at the same time make it, you know, because you're dealing with a queen and, and history, make it seem appropriate and correct for, for the period. Well, I mean, one of the things that's interesting about the film is that from the very beginning on the page in the script, it's completely incorrect. I mean, I mean, you know, like really, like there's all these things in it that are crucial to the storytelling that didn't exist. Right. You know, the wheelchair is a perfect example. And it's essential to, you know, the relationship and the dynamic and, you know, telling the whole story of, you know, her in being so infirm and everything. We, you know, so that, reading that and realising that, sort of, it, it took us out of having to be historically accurate. We, what we did was we found out what would have been, you know, in terms of furniture or food and, you know, so all the detailing. We understood all of that. And then it, we just started to make creative decisions about, you know, the rabbit cages, things like that. I mean, they're just inventions that, you know, we just felt like were right for, you know, a Yorgos Lanthimos slice of history because that's what it is. I mean, there are numerous... I mean, where is the king is a perfect... Qu I mean, like, he's, <laughs> they were married for years... Not in our Wasn't he at the whorehouse down in the next county <laughs> there? Who knows? You know, there's all these kind of glaring things like that that, um, you know, just kind of meant that we had the room to, to go for it. I mean, we sort of had to walk a line the whole time between, 
you know, the film is stylized, you know, it's not naturalistic. I mean, it's pushed in terms of our palette and, you know, how we, you know, had just the choices we made. Um, but we didn't want to tip it into, you don't want to be tongue in cheek, you don't want to make it fantasy. It, it was, so it was just kind of walking a bit of a line, really. Yeah. So it does connect. You know, you do feel the humanity of the performances, yeah. I never felt it didn't feel real. Yeah, good. Uh, and, yeah. you know, and you're, we're not doing documentaries. Yeah. So. Exactly. Yeah. And, and also, he shot with fisheye lenses, mm. which, how, d how did that impact your design choices, both of you? We very quickly realized you're going to see everything yeah. that we put in that room. So we were like, oh, great, let's... Let's let's heighten it. Let's get better. Th you know, we. It was really exciting watching the monitor because often you just work so hard, and you just see the face. And you're like, mm, what about over there? Move. And you. So it was really nice. So we saw the thing. And we're like, oh yes, you're going to see in the corner. So it just we kept. Then we just kept inventing more things and fun stuff for the rabbits had their whole they've got their own wheat grass they've got little scissors to cut the wheat grass and, and and brushes and little flowers for them to eat edible flowers so we did that with everything we kept just because we we're like oh you're gonna see everything so yeah That's great. but also Yorgos had given me the reference of cries and whispers so he was basically saying we're going to be this close so we can see everything you know that it's going on here, and we're going to be really wide. So we just, yeah, we just had to pay, you know, we weren't going to get away with anything. The other thing about the extreme lenses was that, you know, I mean, I don't think I've ever had to think about what's going on up here so much. But so we had to build sections of walls to, you know, hide things that, you know, would just, I don't know, like on a, a normal film, I think you'd kind of go, you know what, it'll drop away. Right. It, nothing was dropping away. So, yeah. It's like shooting in IMAX. Yeah, yeah. yeah so many modern things in these houses that we're covering up all the time modern chain security like yeah, and you normally you can get away with it you know just put a box and we couldn't put a box mm. on anything because you'll just see it mm. so everything had to be you know, designed into the room to hide it without you just seeing a box over a light switch mm. so yeah we would make kind of redesign the set decoration to hide things constantly modern things modern chain and all the how the pictures were held up and right. And, and did you have the advantage of any digital tools, eraser tools, to make things go away? Or was you really have to do it all in camera? No, I mean, we, the only real, we did some set extension on the exterior. But everything else is, yeah, it's in camera. I mean, I, you know, like, kept pointing out things, you know, like, hey. But um, they're like, don't, you know. <laughs> do not rely on us, there's no money. It's like, yeah, they just said there's going to be no, yeah. if you don't do it, we're not going to do it. But yeah. if... For the houses wouldn't, if we couldn't get up somewhere, like Hampton Court, there were certain things that there they would not let you touch, so that had to be, they had to spend a bit of money on that. Was it all in one house? No, it was, um, we were in Hatfield House, um, and we also did the kitchens in, and one, a co like a walkway in um, Hampton Court, mm -hmm. and we shot, we built the spa um, in a place called Dancing House, and that was a Victorian kitchen that we turned into the spa set. Um, and then we went to Luton Hoo yeah, the brothel and built the brothel. Wow. Yeah. So, but really, we were based at Hatfield yeah. a lot. For, it was such a pleasure. Like we had construction on site, prop store. You know, we kind of made a little studio, yeah. you know. We built our carriages like alongside yeah. Hatfield House. So they gave us huge like farm buildings mm. where our painters would be so we could dress and walk over to the, you know, on the Land Rover to go and see how it's going on. That helps so much yeah, when you're all under great. one roof and yeah. you can really control things. But it looks great. The last question was yours. Have we done it? Oh, yeah. oh very good. Well, thank you so much. Again, beautiful work. Thank you.